The 2022 Winter Concert Series is officially underway. On Thursday night, Lady Di and the Power took the stage in the Coon Rapids Civic Center. The group is a party dance band that plays hits from the great masters of pop, R&B, country, blues, jazz, and more. If you missed the show, watch for it on our CTN Community Channel on cable. Three more concerts remain. February 10th, the Backyard Band plays. On March 10th, it's King Wilkie's Dream. And on April 7th, the Brewskies perform. All concerts start at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the door. The concert series is sponsored by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission. A visit to AMC Theaters in Coon Rapids turned into a new business venture for a local couple. We were literally going to see a movie and we saw that it was for lease. <laughs> the rest is history. Two weeks later, they were signing papers on the open space near the movie theater. Squat first, row second, okay? Devo Fitness opened its doors in July of 2018. Hands are coming right up when you set it right in the middle of your palm. The owners, Blake and Casey Buckley, are personal trainers and actually met a decade ago while working together at another gym. Make sure to squeeze the butt. There we go. And three. To finally be doing this for myself, you know, it's kind of a dream come true. We get to work with our clients, you know, we get to see everybody from start to finish, you know, as they're progressing, getting started in their fitness journeys. There we go. Blake Buckley is no stranger to Coon Rapids. He was born at Mercy Hospital and graduated from Coon Rapids High School in 2011. He's even competed in fitness competitions at the national level. Now he's helping others fulfill their own dreams in his hometown. The beginning of the workout, they love me. During the workout, they hate me. But by the time they leave, they love me again. The COVID-19 pandemic took its toll on the business, but members right, rallied okay. together and donated their dues Good. to help the gym stay afloat. DEVO stands for devoted, and so they were devoted to us, and we are very, very much devoted to them, too. The owners say business is stronger than ever, and they recently hired two more personal trainers. The Buckleys expect a busy start to 2022 as people begin to tackle those New Year's resolutions. We want to see people, you know, break out of the norm of, you know, every spring, fall, and New Year's. They hop onto the fad diet, try, fail, and try again. We want to like actually make people and show them how to do this so they can continue and make a lifestyle out of fitness. That realistic goals too, because the little wins are what's going to get you to the big win. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Two new school board members took the oath of office this week. Casey DeShane will represent District 3, which covers southwestern Coon Rapids along with Champlin and Dayton. And Matt Audette represents District 4, which covers northern Andover and northeastern Ramsey along with Ham Lake, Now Then, and Oak Grove. Jeff Simon was re-elected in District 6, which represents northern Coon Rapids and southern Andover. All school board members serve a four-year term. Inside Mercy Hospital's emergency department lobby, there are plenty of people waiting to see a doctor. It seems to be more crowded today. Grace Anderson of Elk River came into the ER after experiencing leg pain. Well, when I first got here, they said five hours, but I don't think it'll be that long. I've been down here for two days. Nicholas Sagerson of Oak Grove came to Mercy Hospital by ambulance with chest pains. He was lucky to get a bed in the emergency department. I'm trying to get admitted up to a room, but they're so full and busy, it's hard to get in. Alina Health has not seen a community illness hit patients and staff like the levels of COVID-19. Completely overwhelmed. Emergency Services Medical Director Dr. Michael Schwem says COVID-19 has given him lots of sleepless nights. Never in my career did I imagine that we would see extensive medical boarding. By that I mean sick people need to be hospitalized but are, are sort of stuck in limbo in the emergency department for hours or days on end. 
The emergency department has extra beds set up in the hallways of the ER, and nurses are taking vitals in the lobby. The surge of Omicron has spread to staff. It's crushing to our department, it's crushing to our ability to take care of patients. It's extremely disheartening. According to Mercy's patient care manager, Ben Thomas, the morale is low. I have staff that have left health care altogether to go do something else that is more mentally, I, I guess, acceptable from an emotional point. The emergency department wants people looking for a COVID test to use community testing sites instead of coming to the ER. So if you're just coming for testing, please use another venue, uh, you know, get online, look for a testing center. Meanwhile, Nicholas Sagerson continued his ER wait for a room in the hospital. I really wish more people would get that coronavirus shot so to help the people who are really medical urgent need to be able to get a room when they come in. This has been very difficult and uh, it feels like a marathon, but there's really no finish line right now. The Winter Concert Series kicks off this week in the Coon Rapids Civic Center. On Thursday night, Lady Di and the Power will be performing variety music. Then on February 10th, the Backyard Band takes the stage. On March 10th, it's the bluegrass sounds of King Wilkie's Dream. And on April 7th, the Brewskies will perform classic jazz. All concerts start at 7 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the door and the price includes dessert and coffee. The concert series is sponsored by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission. COVID testing is once again ramping up across the state. The Anoka Armory opened on Friday for those who need a test. Testing is also available Saturday, January 8th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then, starting January 13th, the armory will be open Thursday through Monday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. until further notice. Appointments are strongly encouraged, but walk-ins are welcome. The testing is free and proof of insurance is not required. For more information or to make an appointment, log on to mn.gov COVID-19. There are about two dozen community testing sites across the state. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, December 21st City Council meeting. Plans to construct a new fire station in Coon Rapids are moving forward. On Tuesday night, the City Council accepted the plans and specifications for the project and authorized the solicitation of bids. The new station will be located off Mississippi Boulevard and 111th Avenue on the old Cook Arena property. It will include a 32,000 square foot building with apparatus bays, administrative offices, a training room, hose tower, and more. The contract for the project is expected to be awarded in February. Coon Rapids is joining a nationwide settlement of claims brought against opioid distributors and manufacturers. The City Council has approved a resolution authorizing participation in the settlement. Coon Rapids could receive about $1.1 million over an 18-year period. The money would be paid from bankruptcy settlements with the companies following civil suits by state and local governments. The lawsuits allege that the pharmaceutical industry has promoted opioid use to treat chronic pain at unprecedented rates while ignoring or downplaying the addictive properties of opioids and ignoring evidence of misuse. I, Kevin Ochez, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Coon Rapids Police Department welcomed its two newest officers on Tuesday night. Kevin Nochez is a graduate of Coon Rapids High School and previously served as a patrol officer in Brooklyn Center. His father, who's a Ramsey County Sheriff's deputy, pinned on his badge. The other new officer is Anthony Podkupaz. He's also a graduate of Coon Rapids High School and previously served as a security officer at Mercy Hospital. His fiancee pinned on his police badge. Welcome to both men. And that's a quick recap of the final city council meeting for 2021. We hope everyone has a great holiday and we'll see you in the new year.
my passion and desire to write this book was just to help give them another tool for when they are trying to process these big things going on in our world. Children's author Laura Larson uses insights from her work as an elementary school counselor to create a calm space for kids using poetry in her second book, Where Do You Go? Does this place make you smile and feel settled inside? Does it make your worries shrink and fears move aside? It could be a memory or a place that you've been, or a magical land with imaginary friends. Where do you go? Between the pages, Larson raises the notion of mindfulness. Where Do You Go is a mindfulness-centered book in helping um, students and children and really anybody receive and practice the skill of visualization. Inside the book, you'll find beautifully illustrated pages, which Larson says can take you to a magical place. So far, the feedback is good. Artist Dooley Sen worked with Larson on her first book, Wild Mindfulness, and was the natural choice to illustrate Larson's second book. Sen lives in Sri Lanka. It's a country about 40 miles off the coast of southeast India and nearly 9,000 miles away from Larson, who lives in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Even though we're on opposite sides of the world, you know, technology is an amazing thing that we can communicate back and forth, and we were able to do this together. The book, Where Do You Go?, is available on Amazon, or you can visit Laura Larson's website at lauralarsonwrites.com. So uh, we've gone from multiple uh, alternatives down to two tonight that we're looking at. Residents turned out at another open house this week for the proposed Highway 610 and East River Road interchange project. The goal is to provide a full access interchange at that location. Currently, only a westbound on-ramp and an eastbound off-ramp exist. The new one um, just came about to try to minimize impacts to the local uh, community, local residents. A new option is now in the mix following previous meetings. The placement of one of the ramps is proposed in a new location to minimize the impact on homes in the area. So after tonight, um, we'll go through the comment cards again, see what kind of feedback we're receiving. Uh, it's anticipated that we'll do a work session with the city council and maybe the county board, a joint, a joint session. The hope is a preferred option will be selected by February and forwarded to MnDOT for review and approval. The beauty of it is once you have the approved concept and you have final design, everything's done. Then it just truly becomes where the dollar's going to come from. Under the best case scenario, construction is still three to four years away. To learn more about the options being considered, log on to the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov. <laughs>